Today we're going to be taking everything that we learned from the last few classes and putting it all together to solve a real design problem. And that is we want to imagine that we are working with a water dispenser that we want to keep the temperature of the water dispenser within a certain range, let's say between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius. If the temperature gets too hot, we want to cool it down. If it gets too cold, we want to heat it up. And we want to use an indicator light to kind of say which of these three states our system is in. While we do this, we're going to be thinking about those different layers of abstraction happening in our problem. So we have at the top level, we know we're going to want to turn the heater on, turn the heater off. We know we're going to have to read temperature. So at the highest level of the different layers of abstraction of this problem, we want to be able to write software that does exactly those things. But one step below as we get into the software is we're going to have to be looking at turning things on or off, that is setting a digital output. We're also going to need to go from a temperature value, like is this 20 degrees, is it 40 degrees Celsius, to an analog input value. And so the analog input value is going to be a number between 0 and 1023, and any value between those two. So that's the next level down, because at that level, we're not really caring, are we measuring temperature, or are we turning a heater on and off? We're just thinking about a digital output, is it on or off, or an analog input. It's a value between 0 and 1023, doesn't matter what it is. And if we go one step further down, we're looking at the interactions between those functions, which are purely in software, and the hardware. That goes all the way down to the chip that ultimately is reading a string of zeros and ones. So when we're looking at the output side, we're going to be setting a single pin or a bit inside of our microchip to be on or off in order to make it so that we can send an output to a pin and ultimately go back up to turn that heater on and off or the cooler on and off. And on the other side, our chip, the CPU, the microcontroller, is what's going to be doing all of the reading of our analog sensor. So it's going to read that sensor. It's going to have to use some sort of binary number to go from the value that's on that sensor to a bunch of zeros and ones. All of these different levels are going to be handed, handled at different levels of abstraction. And so we're going to be referring to these as we go through. Uh, just I want you to keep that in mind as we, as we think about this problem. The other thing that we want to think about is the state machine programming that we learned last time. And so it's the idea that we want to be managing our inputs. We want to be thinking about uh, outputs. What are we actually controlling? And then what logic is relating those inputs to the outputs? Our input for this problem is a temperature sensor. We know that. The outputs to this problem are going to be a heater that is either on or off and some kind of light that is red, blue, or green, depending on the state. And so the logic is what we're going to use to decide which of those states our system is in. Are we uh, above temperature? Are we in the temperature range we want it to be at? Or are we below? And we're going to be looking at how we actually go through this in the, from the programming side to implement a system of this type. Let's get to work. Any state machine design process, I always begin by thinking about the different states of our system. And that always corresponds with the outputs that we want to be controlling. And so in this situation, we have three different states where our heater and cooler are doing something and we have an indicator light that is doing something. So uh, in the top situation, we have the heater is on and the indicator light turns blue. And so that's a situation where we're too cold. We have the middle situation where the cooler has to turn on, and so that's too hot. And we have the third situation at the bottom, which means we are in range. And so with those three states in mind, it kind of gives us an idea of the states we want to program in. And so I'm going to use those as our names. We have too hot, too cold, and in range, or just right. Let's program that in the microbit simulator.
start by defining my three states just as variables, as you can see. And I like to use numbers so that I can have a simple value that corresponds with each state. We also have to add a variable that's going to keep track of our state in our program, and I will just call that state. And I'm gonna say the starting state of my system is going to be in range. Let's now add in a forever loop that's going to constantly be running the three standard functions for our state machine. That's update system, evaluate state, and react to state. Now I'm getting errors because I haven't defined these functions. So I'm gonna define the functions, but I'm also gonna comment them out so that I can deal with them one at a time. So I have my three functions, and now I can start with the outputs, and that is the react to state function. So here's my logic inside the react to state. And so it's simply three things. If the state is too cold, we're gonna turn the heater on, turn the cooler off, and show the red light. If the state is too hot, we show blue, we turn the heater off, turn the cooler on, and then otherwise we know we're gonna be in that just right range, or in range. So we're gonna show green and we're gonna turn both the heater and the cooler off and just let it be. Now, to show this in the simulator, I'm going to add something called an extension in MakeCode. And that's gonna let us simulate a NeoPixel, which allows us to see these different colors. So I've built uh, these things. So this creates the NeoPixel in code. We create a range, which sort of says the, actually, I don't even need that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and I created three functions that show either red, green, or blue. You need to make sure that you set the color this way, and then you actually send the show command in order to make that, that color show. And then down here in the React to State, I'm just adding in my calls to these three functions in each of the three states. Now for the purpose of my program, I'm gonna wait to write functions to run the heater and the cooler, simply because once I know my logic is working correctly in the other functions, I can, I can deal with turning those on and off uh, a little bit later. I know that if the logic works and the red is showing correctly when the red should be showing, when the temperature is too cold, I know that it will turn the heater on and turn the cooler off at the appropriate uh, time in the program. So this is just gonna make sure that everything is working correctly. The next thing that I wanna do is manage the, the next thing that I wanna do is I wanna use the temperature sensor inside the update system function to control which state we're going to be in. So next thing, I'm going to go into the update system function and I'm gonna read a temperature sensor. And so what I've done is I've defined a variable temperature. I created it up here. So I said the temperature is gonna be what I'm monitoring as my loop is going, uh, going through. So the temperature, it's a number, I'm setting it equal to zero to start. Inside my update system function, I am just using this function called read temperature, and I'm storing the result into the temperature variable. And I created a function called read temperature, and right now what I'm doing is I'm reading the analog value on this pin. And so you'll see what that allows me to do in a little bit. Now I am noticing one little thing, I'm noticing that uh, the NeoPixel, I connected to pin zero, but I'm also using pin zero for the analog pin, and I can't have those as the same. So I'm gonna go up here, and I'm just gonna change this to pin four. And so now when we run the code, we're actually fine. NeoPixel is running, it's bright green, which we expect, and this pin zero, we're gonna be able to play around with for the analog read. Now, well, we'll go down here, we'll run the update system function, and now you can see that I can kind of change this value all over the place, and that's, that's changing the value on that pin that's being read. All right, let's now do the evaluate state. That's the final function that we need to build. So this function now takes in a state, and you'll see why we do that in a moment. 
and it's reading the temperature, which right now is a global variable that we're constantly updating. And it's saying that if temperature is between 20 and 30, so greater than 20 and less than 30, then we're gonna return that the state is in range. If the temperature is less than or equal to 20, it's too cold. If temperature is greater than 30, we're gonna to return too hot. Now you'll notice that I have an else here. And the reason I'm doing this is I'm making it so that this function will always return a state. And this is a good habit to have inside your evaluate state function because very often you'll miss something inside this function. You'll miss a situation that might arise from a condition that you haven't thought of. And so it's a good idea to return the state in that situation so that you can know what your system is doing. So we'll scroll down, we'll go to our function here, delete that, uncomment that out, and now let's run the code. And so we can see, we can, we can change this, we can move this up and down. So I can take this and we can see this value there is what we are thinking is the temperature right now. So when the temperature is zero, that's definitely below 20, so we'll need to heat it up. 29 is in range, so it's good. We show green, and if we bring it above 30, 37 degrees Celsius, for example, we can see that this is blue. Our system is now working the way we want it, almost. We can see that based on this temperature value, it's doing the right thing. But the issue that you wanna, you wanna keep in mind is right now, we're not reading temperature. We are reading an analog value and it goes between zero all the way up to 1023. Now let's talk about why it is reading that and we'll talk about how it's reading temperature instead of that number. Now we haven't talked a lot about this, but I wanna say something right now about digital outputs and inputs and analog inputs and outputs. So digital means that you are either putting out a value or reading a value that is either on or off. It is either one or zero. And so if you were to graph what that looks like, you're either gonna have a value that is one, like you can see here, or it's gonna be zero, which is down here. This is what we're doing with our heater, with our cooler, because the heater right now is either full on or full off. And the cooler is either full on or full off. Let's talk about the analog in. The analog in is a signal, and it can be a number between zero and 1023. And analog ins refer to sensors where you want to have a range of values. It's not actually a continuous value. It actually has these little discrete levels. And that's simply because the microcontroller is using powers of two. It's using a series of bits to represent that number that it is reading on the analog read pin. And so it is doing as best as it can to read that number and represent it with a series of bits. And this relates very closely to what we talked about at the start of last time, last week, when we were thinking about converting a string of ones and zeros to a, a character, a letter. When you're doing analog to digital conversion, you know that you wanna represent the number with a series of bits. If you have eight bits, as we did with the serial character, the, the character for the secret message, you're going to figure out which numbers are zero, which are one. You're gonna figure out which powers of two correspond to each of those, and then you're gonna add up all of the numbers. And so the largest number that we could represent from this one, from an eight bit input was 255. So zero to 255. If we add two additional bits to that, we actually get a lot more values because we're adding in another two powers of two to our list. So a 10 bit representation means that we can go from with 10 different bits, all zero, or 10 different bits all equal to one or some combination of the two. If all of those bits for a 10 bit representation are zero, then that's going to represent a number zero. If all of those bits are one, if we add together all of those numbers, then the largest number we get is 1023. And it turns out for the micro bit, it actually has a 10 bit 
analog to digital converter, which means it's doing all the math for us and just figuring out from all of those bits what number between 0 and 1023 is being read on that pin. But we don't want a number between 0 and 1023. Away from that and just be able to read that sensor and know what temperature is uh, being read on that sensor. And so we're going from an analog reading between 0 and 1023 to a temperature. Now the range of a temperature sensor depends on the sensor. For the purpose of example, I'm going to say that the temperature sensor we are using reads from negative 10 degrees Celsius, corresponding with a value of 0, to 80 degrees Celsius, corresponding with a value of 1023. And the reason that matters is we can now write a function that actually maps from this range, 0 to 1023, to this temperature range of negative 10 Celsius to 80 Celsius. Let's write that code to handle that for us. So here is our read temperature function. And right now we're just returning the raw analog value, which we may not want to do. So let's, let's fix this up. So I'm storing this value into a new variable that I'm calling analog value. And I'm going to use a special function out of our math library right here called map. And what this is going to do is this is going to first define two sets of values for 0 to 1023, those are the analog values that are coming in. I know that those correspond to a temperature from negative 10 Celsius to 80 degrees Celsius. When I give it the analog value, what this math.map is going to do is it's going to look at the analog value, it's going to look at how it compares to 0 and 1023, and it's going to identify the temperature that corresponds with that analog value in this range from negative 10 to 80. And I'm returning that value as the result of this function. So when we update our system, we are setting temperature, the temperature of our system, equal to the result of this function. Let's see what happens when we write that value to the console. So you can see now that as I change the analog value here, the temperature is changing on that range up there. And so you can see I'm at 48 degrees Celsius. If I bring it all the way down to zero, I'm at negative 10. If I bring it all the way up to 1023, you can see that it's reading 80 degrees Celsius. And so anywhere inside of here that I, that I drag the value, you can see that I'm now reading a bunch of different temperatures. And what's really kind of cool about this is that now that I can see the temperature down here, I can see that my system is working exactly the way I want it to. If I drag this value down, the temperature right now is 10.4 degrees, which means it's too cold. So I should be heating up my water dispenser, which is why the color right now is red. If on the other hand, I bring this up, let's bring it up a little more to 46 degrees Celsius now. 46 degrees Celsius is too hot. It's above that high, high end of the range of 30 Celsius. So it should be cooling down my system, which is exactly what it's doing. So I now know that my system is responding exactly the way I want it to. So I've now completely designed a system that is responding to an analog sensor and is setting the output of the system based on the value of that sensor. If it's too cold, it heats it up. If it's right in the right range, we can see green, meaning it's not doing anything. And when it's too hot, it is cooling down the system. It's doing exactly the right thing. The last thing that we have to do is write the code to turn the heater on and off and the cooler on and off. And so I have included some code here to turn the heater on. You can see that this function, heater on, I am just doing a digital write to pin P1, so I'm making pin 1 the heater, and let's make pin 2 the cooler. And so if you go all the way down, I have all of the code working now down here so that it is showing the right color, it's turning on the heater or cooler depending on the state that we're in. And so now, as we change that analog in, you can see that the uh, pin 1 is changing as needed. I want you, uh, to wrap up this task, to set up these remaining functions, heater on, cooler off, heater on, and cooler off, so that everything is working according to plan. 
So get to work. Good luck. Thanks for watching.